Okay, hi everyone, it's Teacher Matt here from Oxford English Masters, and today we're going to learn how to play Civilization 1. Uh, now, this is a pretty old game from, I think it's 1991, certainly the 1990s, um, and so you have to expect that uh, the graphics, the pictures, are a little bit um, more simple than modern games. But Civilization 1 was an iconic game in its time, maybe a little bit like Minecraft is more recently today. It's a really good game, and I use it in my classes to teach my students um, words about geography, history, technology, science, politics. Um, it's also a simulation um, of how to run a country. Um, and so I think you can learn a lot about the world, about economics, about the way the world works, about peace and war, and, you know, maybe why the world looks the way it does today from this game. I have learned a lot about the world from playing this game. And I have been playing it for a long time. Um, I bought this game, I think, in the 1990s, so I did actually buy this game. It used to have a, a big manual a book to teach you how to play the game and i still play it sometimes today so i guess i've been playing it for like 30 years now um and i still learn new things um i'm gonna teach you how to play the game step by step we're gonna play um until we have a few cities so just the beginning of the game um the only problem with this game is it doesn't really teach you how to play it uh, many modern games they will do something called onboarding Onboarding means they will, you know, kind of have little windows that come up and tell you what to do next so that you you learn while playing the game. This game doesn't do that, so it can be a little bit scary when you're first learning to play it. It can look quite complicated, but it's actually not, um, not too hard to learn uh, once you get used to the interface. Um, this is the first game, Civilization 1. There are later games. There's 2, 3, 4, 5. I think there's a 6 now as well. Um, and I still use 1 to teach my students because it is still the simplest game. And you can actually play a whole game of Civilization 1 in like a day. You can't do that with the later games. They take longer. Um, so I still prefer this game to the later games, even though it's not as beautiful as the later games. Right. Let's get started. So, first of all, where can you play this game? Where to find it online? So, let me show you. So, let's start a new tab. And can you search for Civ 1 Online Free? Okay. And you will get this top hit here, Play Classic Games. This one seems to be the best place to play this online. So, click on here. And you will see this page here. And you click on this blue button here, play it online. Be careful, don't click elsewhere because there's a lot of adverts and things here. And you're going to have to watch a short video advert. So let's do it. You have to press the play button. You'll get a chance to skip. Okay, just skip for me. Fine. Sometimes you get a skip button here. Right, press any key to continue. So click. All right, so the first menu, um, a long time ago before we had Windows, when this game was invented, uh, we used something called DOS. This is DOS. So this is like a text interface. You had to type to make the computer do things. So it'll look very, very old for younger people. Uh, it looks old even to me, and I'm not so young now, but um, it's not hard to use. So first of all, choose number one, VGA color. Um, you can have sounds if you want to choose two. You want to have sounds, but the sounds are really old and don't sound that great, so I prefer not. So I just press one, and choose mouse and keyboard is better. You don't need a mouse to play this game, but yeah, you might as well have the option. So press one, and off we go. Okay, enter. I'm going to press enter. So here's the front screen, Civilization. Um... You can see my cursor is moving, but the cursor in the game looks like a little torch and it's not moving. So I'm going to click on the screen and now I can move the game cursor. 
If I want to get out of that, because now look, I can't leave this window, just press escape and I can move my cursor again. So click, move their cursor, escape, move my cursor. Okay, right. Um, now, if you press start a new game, um, the game will create a world which is not like our world. It's like an alien world with new, new continents, new islands. Um, that can be kind of fun because you will be really exploring a new world. Um, if we play in our world, then we kind of know where everything is. We know America's here and China's here, Africa. But yeah, be warned, if you start a new game, it isn't going to be our world. Um, you can also customize your world. You can choose if you want, you know, more islands or more mountains. You can make a very mountainous world or a very kind of island-based world or a very dry world or a very cold world, like a winter snow world. That can be fun too. But what I always ask my students to do first is to play in our world because um, I want them to learn the geography of our real world. I want to use, you know, the real world uh, words for countries and so forth. So please, let's choose Earth. Oh, didn't work. I need to go click with the mouse. Okay. Right, uh, you will get this intro here, this introduction about how the world was formed. I think you probably know how the world was formed. So I'm going to press enter and it's going to skip that. Right, now we get the difficulty screen. Um, for new students, you might want to play on the easiest level, Chieftain. It is very easy though, it can be a little bit boring because um, less things will happen, the enemy will not attack so much. But when you're getting used to it, that might be a good idea. Um, Prince is a good middle level. If you're quite an experienced gamer and you're good at games, this might be a good challenge for you. I like to play on King. I've been playing this game a long time and I, I, you know, I can usually win on King, but King is a good challenge even for me now. So I like King. Emperor is a bit crazy because the computer actually cheats on Emperor. It will suddenly build things that it hasn't really had time to build. So I don't really like to play on Emperor. It's a, yes, it's a great challenge, but it also feels a bit unfair. So I'm going to go for King. Um, now you choose how many other countries, civilizations there are. Um, if you really want the game to be easy, I suppose you could choose less, but it's also less fun and less interesting. I prefer to have more civilizations. Um, some of them will die quite quickly anyway, so, you know, just because you have seven civilizations at the start doesn't mean you'll have civilizations, seven civilizations at the end. So I think it's better to have seven. Okay, now you pick your tribe. Um, this is which country you are going to be in the game. A word of warning, uh, some of these are harder than others, and that's just because of the geography, because of where they are. So English is quite hard because you are in England, Britain, the British Isles, and you are stuck on an island, which means you can't go anywhere until you learn how to make boats. That makes it harder. So... Uh, English is quite a challenge, even for me now. Um, similarly, Babylonian. The Babylonian civilization is kind of in like the Middle East around Iraq, Turkey, uh, Syria, that kind of area. And it is surrounded by enemies. So Babylonians often get attacked from many sides at the same time. And in fact, in the real world, the Babylonian Empire was wiped out fairly early. So I think Babylonian is quite hard as well. Maybe avoid that unless you want a challenge. Uh, good countries to do. Um, America is fairly easy. You've got lots of land, not too many enemies around. China, uh, Chinese is quite easy as well. Um, a little bit harder because the land is not quite so good for farming, but Chinese is okay. Uh, Russian is quite good actually because they have forests and yeah, lots of resources. So these big countries are fine. Um, if you choose a European country, you're going to have maybe more enemies near you. But yeah, it can be fun as well. That's OK. India's not bad too. Zulu, Africa's not bad. Um, so most are OK, but maybe avoid English or Babylonian. Uh, I'm going to choose. Um, I'm going to go for somewhere in Europe. I'm going to choose. Let's do let's do German. 
Okay, then you get to put your name. So I'm going to put my name, Matt. So teacher Matt. Okay. Okay, and you get this introduction screen. Teacher Matt, you have risen to become leader of the Germans. May your reign be long and prosperous. There's a special word. Prosperous means like lucky, good fortune in the future. The Germans have knowledge of irrigation, mining, pottery, and roads. So every civilization at the start of the game, they know irrigation, which means making fields, mining, making mines, and making roads. And each civilization will also get like a free technology, an extra one. So the Germans have pottery. Okay. Right, here is our uh, map screen. So this is really where we play the game. So the game is, you know, played across a world map. Let me just guide you around this screen so you understand what is going on. Uh, we have the years here, 4000 BC. The game starts at 4000 BC. That's about 6000 years ago. Now we are 2023. If we go back to the year zero, that's about 2000 years ago. And then BC, it's a bit confusing. BC counts backwards. So it's like 1000 BC is 3000 years ago. 2000 BC, 4000 years ago. And then 4000 BC is actually 6000 years ago, more or less. Uh, here is your money. So at the moment I have no money. There's a coin symbol there. That's not a zero. That's actually a coin. Um, I'm German. The unit I'm controlling right now is settlers. We'll talk about that more in a moment. It can move one square. Nothing special here. And the square I'm on at the moment is grassland. And there's a picture of my settlers again. Um, okay, so you can see here I've got some sort of grassland around me. I've got a forest here. There's actually a little animal there. Uh, in the forest. I can eat that later. And there's some dry land here, a little bit dry as well, maybe not quite so good for growing food. You can also see I've got a little map up here, which is useful later when you want to move around the big map. Be careful about pressing that though, because you might think, oh my god, my, my screen's gone black. Where am I? Just click until you get back to the thing you can see. Uh, this black area is our places we have not explored yet. So later on, this black area will disappear as we explore the world. Okay, so this unit in the middle here is called a settler. Settlers are people who are looking for a home. They are going to start a city, start a country even. Okay, and the picture is like a little wagon, a bit like um, the frontiers men in America when they were looking for, looking to start new cities. They would travel in kind of wagons with wheels. So that's what that is if you wonder what it is. Um, I know the picture is, the graphics are really old, so it can be a little hard sometimes to work out what these pictures actually mean. Right, so this, the settler is a very important unit because it builds cities, it can also build roads, make fields, it can do a lot of things in the game. They are your builder units, and they're very important for that reason. Uh, you need to protect them, and they're expensive to make new ones. Okay, so the first thing you do in the game, we need to make a city. Okay, this game is all about building a country and making cities, making our country better. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is build a city. The way to do that, there's two ways. One, you can go up to orders and click uh, found new city. To found a city means to make a new city. But the easier way is just to press B. So I'm going to press B and I get to name my city. If you want to give it a new name, you can. Some of my younger students like to call their cities things like Poo Poo City or Wee Wee City. Okay, fine. But I'm just going to leave it the same as Berlin because that is the real name of the German capital city. Right, I press enter. Here you go. Here are my, my settlers, my wagons. It is 4000 BC. And they have made a city. Look at Berlin. Wow, what an amazing city. Uh, of course, at the moment, it's just a bunch of mud huts. In the future, it's going to be a huge fantastic city but that will take time okay 4000 bc we don't have cars yet we don't have a lot of technology right press enter again and then you will come to your city screen so this screen is also very important let me just guide you around it so in the city here you can see 
we have a palace, although actually I couldn't really see the palace if I go back to view again, but okay, you can see your city. If you want to look at it again, you can press view. Um, there is a palace, so I don't know which of these huts is the palace, but anyway. Um, the palace is where your king is living. This is the center of your government, and that means that this city is your capital city. It's your most important city, okay? Um, you don't want to let the enemy take your capital city because you will lose your palace, which means you lose your government, and that causes a lot of trouble, okay? But don't worry. You can build another palace later if you need to, but you can only have one city in your country that has a palace. You can't have like two or three palaces. Right, over here, Berlin, pop. Pop means population. How many people are in your city? There are 10,000 people in my city. That is represented by this one man. One man here means 10,000 people. Um, at the moment, the man is a farmer. Um, and you can see actually where he's farming in this little map here. So if I click on him, if I click on this square, the farmer disappears and he turns into a little, a guy with like a little guitar, like an Elvis pop star. That means I've told him not to be a farmer anymore, so he's going to play music. I can also click on him again and make him a tax man who will collect money. I can also click on him again and make him a scientist who will learn more things. But at the start of the game, you really need food. So farmers at the start are going to be the most important. So I don't suggest doing this. Don't click on this and make them a farmer or something else because you need food. It's very important that your city gets bigger and stronger. Now you can choose which square your farmer will farm in. Oops, I clicked outside. Let me click back in again. Uh, so you want to go back to the city screen. You just click on the city. So you see over here we have food. This is food. Um, and if I click in different places, you can see most of these squares I get two food. Oh, this one I only get one. And the forest I only get one, two. But if I click on the animal, I actually get two food. That's nice. Uh, now it takes two food to feed one person here. So two food for one person. But you see I've actually got extra food here. Do you see there's a line, a little space between this these two foods here and the two food here. Um, this means I've got extra food and that's great. That extra food will go into the food storage down here. And when this fills up, I will get another person. So more food means more people, which is true, right? If people feel they are happy and fed, they're going to have children and they're going to have a big family. There'll be more people. So the next thing here, these little shields, they are resources. They are things like wood and stone, and they are used to make things. Those will go into this box here. And you can see I have a little soldier here. If you can see what this is, like a little guy with a stick. So when this is full of resources, it will make a soldier. So more resources are good for making things. Uh, you can also see I've got two arrows here, um, and that is trade buying and selling things but trade is also like about swapping ideas so trade gives me money it will also give me science although you can't see the science icon yet we'll we'll see that later okay science is like a little light bulb um so trade is actually really important to winning the game you want science you want your technology to get better you also want money so trade is your secret weapon Okay, um, I think this is the best square here with the animal. It gives me two food and two resources. So I'm going to tell my farmers to go and uh, maybe hunt these animals and cut down some trees. Right, over here. Um, don't worry about this part for the moment. You can see your settler. There's a, I actually have two settlers at the start of this game. Sometimes the game gives you a second settler for free. Um, but not always. Now over here. If you change, you have some choices, you press change, of what I can build. Now this is very important. The first thing you need to build is some soldiers. Now they're not called soldiers, they're called militia. Militia means like farmers who can fight. They're like normal people who can fight. Um, so they're not very good soldiers. 
You can see there's an ADM here. That means attack, defense, and move. My militia has one, one, one. They are attack one, defense one. They can move one square. So they're really not very good, but they are cheap and they are the first soldier you can make. So you need them. You need to make a soldier to protect your city. If your city has no soldiers inside it, any bad guy can come and just take your city and then it's going to be, if you've only got one city, it's going to be game over. So very, very important first thing is make a soldier. Okay, right, exit. Um, okay, um, I'm going to just press enter now until my soldier comes out. Okay, so I'm just going to keep pressing enter. You can see the years are going by. It's now 3,900 and my money is going up. And look, I have my first soldier. Now, you can move this soldier by using the keyboard uh, arrow keys. Up, left, down, right. But before you do anything else, you need to protect your city. Because as I said, if you don't have soldier in your city it's going to get taken very quickly so what i will do i put the soldier in the city and i press the f key or if you want to go to orders you can press fortify okay orders fortify we'll just press f that means the soldier will stay in the city and protect it there you go i've pressed f okay he has gone inside look he's in here and there's a gray line around him to show he's inside i just made another soldier though which is good so I'm going to go out with my next soldier and have a look around. This is Germany here. I'm heading towards Italy now. Oh, I've made another soldier. Okay. Now, you don't want to make too many soldiers because um, they take up resources, but also there's something else I need to do now. The next thing you need to do is make another city, right? We want to have lots of cities. That makes us stronger. So I'm going to choose settlers. I actually have an extra free settler, but I'm not going to use that because... Um, that's kind of, I feel like that's cheating and uh, you don't you may not have that when you play the game okay I'm gonna now change this to making settlers very important so once you've protected your city once you've made some soldiers some militia make another settler so you can make another city right while it's making that I'm going to explore now sometimes you don't want to go left or right or up or down you want to go diagonally diagonally try and say that when you're drunk diagonally so the way to do that is to press g for go you can also just go to the um go to in the menu here and click on the square and look it will now go diagonally oh i found rome perfect timing right i want to talk to the the emiss sorry an emissary from the romans wishes to speak with you will you receive him shall we talk to the romans now usually it's a good idea to talk to other countries because we can get something from them and we can make friends with them. So let's press yes. Oh, Caesar, famous Roman emperor. Greetings from Caesar, ruler and emperor of the Romans. You may be worthy to make peace with us. Peace, great. We have prepared a treaty for your signature, like a contract. Reject, reject means say no. Accept means say yes. Well, I think we want to be friends. If you say reject, that's going to start a war. So let's not have war. Let's have peace. Let's say accept. Okay, blah, blah, blah. We affirm this treaty of eternal friendship and goodwill between the people of the Roman and German civilizations enter. We welcome the friendship of the German people and their most wise and munificent leader. Munificent means like kind, great. Emperor, teacher, Matt. Ooh, I like that. Okay, and I'm going to say welcome peace with the Romans. Right. We're now friends. Okay, great. Now, I'm still exploring. Look at these. Do you see these little gray? They look like little houses with like a yellow roof. I'm going to... Oh, okay, I'm going to keep exploring over here before I go to the village. Okay, I'm going to go into this village. Now, this village might give me something good. It might give me something bad. It's a little bit of a, a chance, a risk, but I'm going to do it. Oh, you have discovered scrolls of ancient wisdom. Now, this is like a free technology. Horseback riding. Nice. I can now ride horses. Okay, this gives me a new soldier. This gives me cavalry. Cavalry are like men on horses. Nice. All right. Okay, I'm going to keep looking around. I'm going into France now. 
looks like there's no French civilization. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to go down here, have a look. Okay, I'm going to get another village. You have discovered a friendly tribe of skilled mercenaries. Mercenaries are soldiers who fight for money. So I've got some free soldiers, basically. I don't actually have to pay them, even though they're mercenaries. Okay. Oh, so now I've got... Oh, that's a legion. They're quite good. They are attack three, so they're quite good at fighting. Okay, I'm going to use him to explore as well now. You see, I'm looking around. Now I'm going into Spain. This is France. Okay, I'm going to go down into Turkey here. Oh, I've now met the Babylonians. They want to speak to me too. Great. Greetings from Hammurabi, ruler and emperor of the Babylonians. Once again, peace? Sure, accept. Nice. Welcome, peace. Great. Okay. I'm still exploring. I'm waiting for my settler to be built. So you see now that my city, so I go into the city screen by clicking on the city, has now got two people. Uh, population is 30,000. It's not quite as simple as 10 for each person. Uh, they have a different way of calculating the population. But anyway, that's 30,000. Right, now though I've got more food, I've also got more resources and my food storage is going well. So I should have a new settler quite soon. And I'm going to go and explore that village now. Okay, so I've found Spain. Oh, another friendly tribe of skilled mercenaries. Wow, I've got a lot of soldiers. Okay, right, I'm now going to go past. You can't, um, by the way, you can't go left or down here. So right or down. You can't go next to the city. You have to go kind of around it. They don't like it if you go next to them. So um, I have to go diagonally, which is a bit weird. So if you're not sure why you can't move, just move diagonally and then it's fine. Oh, that's England there. I can see England off the coast. Okay. Right. Oh, I've got some cavalry now. Nice. Okay, that's great. Right, I'm going to keep exploring. Maybe Russia is over here. Keep moving. Okay, I want to go down to Egypt. Let's see if Egypt has someone living there. Oh, they do. Look at that. The Egyptians. Okay, I thought they might. Okay. Once again, peace. Great. Welcome, peace. Nice. No problems. Okay. Right. Um, I'm going to come back and talk to the Romans again. Why not? So at the start of the game, um, usually it's quite peaceful. There won't be any war. Everyone's quite friendly. You can make friends easily. Right. Let's try another. Oh, I got 50 gold this time. You have discovered valuable metal deposits worth 50 gold. Very nice. Game is going very well so far. No problems at all. Right, now the only problem here is I can't actually get past uh, Thebes, Egypt, because if I try and go left or down, it won't let me because I'm too close to their city. So I can't really go into Africa at the moment. There is a solution to that later, but not at the moment. All right, fine, I'm going to keep exploring. I'm trying to get rid of all this black stuff. I want to see the I want to see the world. Oh, now this is your palace. Um, you can now build your king or emperor's palace. Um, this is just for fun. It's just aesthetic. It doesn't have any effect on the game. Okay, I uh, I I want to be like the White House. I'm going to choose this one. Okay, just for fun. Don't worry about that. Right. Finally, took a while. Berlin builds settlers. Oh, science. Right, this is very important. This is where you choose what technology you are going to learn and study. Okay, and you don't get it straight away. You have to wait a little bit um, for your scientist to learn this. So I could learn the alphabet, which is like A, B, C, D. I could learn masonry, which is walls. I could learn ceremonial burial. That's kind of like temples and, you know, mummies and things like that. Or I could learn the wheel. Um, I think I'm going to learn the alphabet first because I want to learn to read and write. But it doesn't come straight away. It will take a little time. Okay. Um, right. I'm going to take my settler and make a new city. Now, where should I make a city? This looks quite good over here. Rivers are really good places to make cities. I'll give you that tip for free. So I'm going to make a new city on a river. Right, I'm going to explore up here now. Remember, I'm using G 
to go diagonally, which makes me kind of faster. Right, I've a little bit cheated here. I've got another settler ready from earlier, but I'm going to keep building settlers. So I'm also going to make another city maybe here on this river. So rivers, just like in the real world, rivers are great places to make cities. Many of the world's cities are on rivers. That's totally true. They give you extra food, they give you water, of course, and they give you more trade. Uh, so they're really good, good places. Okay. Oh, more skilled mercenaries. I've been super lucky so far with the villages. Sometimes you get something bad. Okay, I'm now exploring into like Finland and Sweden. Uh, the Romans don't want to speak to me, so I'm going to keep moving around. Uh, okay, I'll go up with this one. It's a good idea to try and go different directions with your soldiers because, of course, you can explore more. If you if you go the same way with all of them, uh, it's going to be slower. Oops, I didn't cheat. Uh-oh, here's the bad thing. You have unleashed a horde of barbarians. Barbarians are bad guys in the game. Uh, they don't really have a home. They just want to come and steal your 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 cities so they're kind of like thieves or pirates um okay we'll see if my soldier survives that i'm guessing he's going to die if you're playing this on the easier level you probably will beat the barbarians okay i'm gonna make another city um but if you're playing on the hard level like i am i'm probably gonna die but it doesn't matter okay i'm gonna make a new city remember you press b leipzig okay why not and once again, I press enter. They're making militia. That's fine. Um, are they on the best square? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Look at this square. It's great. It's got two food, one resource, and it's got extra trade. Rivers give you extra trade. So rivers, again, fantastic. Look, I've got one gold and one science. Nice. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, I knew they were going to kill me. Never mind. It's all right. Right, I'm going to make another city here too, on this river. This is kind of, I think that's the Rhone, the Rhone River in the real world. Um, okay, I'm going to press B. Hamburg. Oh, yes, give me a hamburger. Okay, there it is. Once again, is that the best square? It's an animal, that's probably a good idea. I could choose the river, but I think in this case, yeah, two food, two resources, that looks like the best square. Yeah, I think that's the best one. Usually the computer will choose the best one automatically, but sometimes it gets it wrong. Right, I'm going to keep looking around. But I now have my three cities. I said I'm going to help you build three cities. And I'm doing well. I'm not fighting anyone, apart from the barbarians, of course. I'm a little bit, wor a little bit worried this city has no defense in it, no soldiers so what i could do is put that soldier in uh oh now they're going to try and kill me so i better try and kill them first so i'm going to press g onto them and attack them and i lost okay never mind i told you those those soldiers are not very good it's all right we're going to have better soldiers later right i'm going to put my soldier inside that city i'm still exploring here oh i'm going down towards india now Cavalry can usually move two squares, so they're faster because they're on horses. Right, I'm going to press F, put him inside. Remember, you press F to make soldiers stay where they are. And now all my cities are protected. Oh, I've just met the Indians. Delhi, great. Gandhi. Peace? Sure. Welcome peace. I will welcome peace. Great. So if you do want to attack someone, though, um, all you have to do is press G and click on their city. And if you've signed, I have signed a peace treaty. I told the Indians will be peaceful. So I've got to kind of break that treaty now. I've got to break my promise. So I'm going to say break promise. And look, I attack their city. Right. That means now that I am at war with the Indians. So they might come and attack me later or I need to attack them. Or we could make peace later, okay? So that's a choice you can make. You can decide whether you want to play this game peacefully or whether you want to be very aggressive and fight a war. Look, there's barbarians coming towards my cities now. But my city is defended, so I should be okay. I've got a soldier here now. I'm going to press F. Okay, here comes the barbarian. Let's see if... Yeah, I thought probably I will win because... 
my militia, my soldier is defending himself. You see, there's this green, uh, so gray line around it. And also, when you're in a city, uh, your defense is stronger. You get a defense bonus. So I figured I probably would survive that, and I did. Right, that's everything you need to know to get started with the game. Look, I've already got three cities there. So once again, the most important thing to play this game at the start um, is to make settlers. You want to have new cities. In fact, I'm going to change this one to a settler as well. Okay. Um, but first, you must make a soldier to protect your city and put him inside. You will, you can see if you're city is protected because it has a black line around it. If I take my soldier out, and look, you can click on his picture, and then I can move him again if you want to take the soldier out again. Let me just move this guy. Look, if I go outside... Okay, Berlin's built settlers. Um, oh, I still got one soldier. That was a new soldier. Right. Okay, I've got another settler. I'm going to go towards this river now. Um... Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, if you want to move automatically, you don't want to have to keep moving it yourself, you can just press G and tell it where to go. So, like, I could tell him to go here, and he will go by himself. But you can't G into the black areas. You can only G into the areas that have no... Uh, you've already found, okay? Um, I'm going to G down here again. So, you see, I can't G into... No, and it also won't let me G into the sea because he can't just jump into the sea. Right, do you see this city now has got a white line around it? That means there's no soldier inside. That means any enemy that comes now is going to just take it. So that's not a good idea that I took all my soldiers out of my city. If you change your mind about um, a soldier that is Ging, has got G on it, you can just click on it. And it will turn off the G, so you click on it and then click on its picture. And now I can tell it to go back to the city. And, uh, oh, why are you not Ging? Okay, can you go by yourself, please? And then I'm going to press F to put him in my city to keep the city safe. Okay. Oh, the Romans have built the pyramids. Hmm, not Egypt. Interesting. Okay, we'll learn more about Wonders of the World. And there's lots more to learn about this game. But that is really the start of the game. Make a city using settlers, press B. Make a soldier, put it in the city, press F to protect the city, and then change to more settlers so you can make more cities. Try to make as many cities as you can. Oh, one more thing to learn. It's not a good idea to put the cities too close to each other. You see there's like two squares to each side. Do you see this red square here? That means that another city is using that square. So actually, Leipzig is using that square here. That means that Berlin can't use that square. So if you put cities really close together, like next to each other, that means they're going to have to share the land. And that means it's going to be harder for them to have enough food and get big. So it's probably a good idea to keep like at least two squares uh, around each city. Even four squares would be better, actually. Four squares would be best and then the cities will not um, overlap and compete for resources, okay? So think about that, and I told you that making cities on rivers is a really smart thing to do, because they are really the best place to make your cities. Okay, there you go. I hope that was clear. The one more thing I need to teach you, which is, okay, how to save the game and load it again so we can play it know continue this next time the this website will save to your computer so as long as you're using the same computer the same device it will remember you and your save game will be there and you can load it again but you have to use the same computer it's not saving on the cloud so press game go down to save game uh, and just press enter and then you choose which game to save on so if you want to not go over one of these save games then don't, but it's okay. Press enter. There you go. 3140 BC, King Teacher Mat. And then it's now saved. You can just close the window. Or if you want, you can go to game and press quit the DOS. Yes, quit. You'll then see this page, which looks a bit scary because there's nothing here. Um, you can just leave now if you want. Or if you want to go back into the game, you can press CIV, Civ, like civilization. 
Press enter and you'll be back at the start again. One, one, one. Enter and I can now choose load a save game. Enter. And there I am. King teacher Matt Germans through 3140 BC. Enter. And there we go. Back to my game again. Okay. Simple as that. Okay. I hope that was useful and interesting and I explained it as clearly as I could. This is the second time I tried to make this video. I think, think it's much better the second time. First time I tried to be China and I uh, I was doing really badly in the game and I think my explanation was not so clear. So hopefully today, my second time to try to make this video, it is clear. Okay, thanks very much. Give us a like, give us a comment down below and I'll see you next time in our next video. We'll continue this game and get a little bit more advanced, especially with like how to fight war and attack and defense. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.